All right, today I have a few pieces of depression glass to show you. And we'll start out with this piece right here. As you may or may not know, depression glass owes its beautiful green color to uranium. Uranium specifically, um, usually natural uranium, sometimes depleted uranium actually too. In fact, I think most of my pieces are actually from depleted uranium. Well, this can be uh, usually determined via gamma spectroscopy. Anyhow, these beautiful pieces right here are actually um, reasonably radioactive and you can buy them at, if you're in the United States at any antique shop. I mean, I'm talking every antique shop. You're almost not an antique shop if you don't have a whole bunch of this just sitting around for like five bucks a piece. It's cheap and it's fun. So let's test it. There it is. Now, let's use the CDV 700. This is a CDV 700 here, a Victorine Model 6A with a CDV705 external speaker. This is an original external speaker too, so that's the real thing. And by the way, this unit was calibrated um, a couple months ago by Geoelectronics. So hopefully you can, oops, let me move that to where you can see it nicely. All right, currently we're in times one mode, so zero, 100, 200, 300 counts per minute. Background is maybe 10, 15. Beta shield's open. So we're not getting very much. Okay. Well, while we give that a minute to figure out how high it wants to be, let's try the inspector with the alpha shield open. Now, I just cleaned all of these, by the way, carefully cleaned every one of them and removed all the dust. So it is okay to do what I'm doing right now. Normally I would recommend not ever pointing your device face up because you can contaminate the probe. Background, this is about 38 counts per minute normally. And that's almost, probably almost all alpha. Well, not all, probably about halfway alpha. Let's see if that's true. Because we're blocking all alpha now and blocking some of the very weak betas that come off of this. And sure enough, it's dropping. We'll look at the pieces in the, in the dark with a black light in just a minute. All right, so let's get out the next piece. This is kind of an ugly piece. Well, I think it's kind of ugly. I found this in my friend's house. I used to eat off of this when I was, when I used to live with some roommates for quite some time when I was in college. And I used to eat off of this plate. I really wish I had known when I ate off of this plate, but I didn't. Oh well, live and learn. As you can see, it's actually not particularly hot, so it probably isn't particularly dangerous to eat off of. But still, I really kind of wish I hadn't. And again, never ever put your probe face up like this, unless you're like me and you absolutely just swipe tested every single one of these plates, which I did. I swipe tested them. Took a paper a towel after I completely, like, carefully washed these things and swiped it and made sure there was no dust on it or radioactive contamination coming off of it. So unless you're doing that, don't ever, ever put it face up like this. 
I'm only doing it because, well, I'm doing it. Consider it like you're a parent who tells you not to do something and turns around and does it themselves. It makes me a hypocrite, but that's okay. Then I got this cool little ashtray. Not very radioactive at all. This thing sit, used to sit on my uh, table for the longest time, like right beside me. It produces almost no radiation. And that's like rounding error levels of radiation. The hottest piece is about to show up in just a minute. This certainly isn't it. Wow. 150, 180 counts per minute. My bathroom floor tiles probably put off more than that. But anyway, it looks nice under a black light. And now the most potent piece that I have, this guy right here. I think this piece is great. I adore this piece. All right, let's see what my time is. <laughs> I'm gone too long. Obviously, this is the hottest piece. And then we'll look at them in the dark in just a second. Okay. Now let's, um, oh wow, we're getting a little bit more off of the uh, CDV700 finally. I'm starting to wonder about it, huh? But I feel like we've cheated the CDV700 with these high, high sensitivity units. Let's cut it off for a minute. Give it a second for the power to charge out of it. Just for giggles. And hook up our low energy RAP47 scintillation counter. Let's see what this thing gets. Just for giggles. Let me tell you, the cable's tangled in it. All right. This is a cesium iodide detector. Okay, we've already maxed out the times one. This is normally around 100 counts per minute, maybe 150. So we'll go to times 10. Now this is 0, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Let's hold this away from the uranium. Get it down to background. This probe is probably losing a lot of its counts because the CDV700 is probably not picking them up very well because the voltage the voltage this sends back is probably not being picked up very well, but that's all right. It's good enough. So about a thousand counts a minute. Not bad. I guess scintillation is the way to go. And just to see if the CDV700, or not the CDV700, the uh, Polymaster notices anything. This thing is uh, kind of ironic. Uh, the this, this, the uh, Polymaster is usually very sensitive, but it has a lot of trouble with depression glass because the depression glass puts off so low energy photons right on the level where this thing's having trouble picking them up. I mean, you see it picks it up just fine, but the dose rate's very small. It's probably a little higher than this is showing, but not by much. Okay, now let's see them in the dark. All right, so here we are in the dark. Now I have my black light on, and I have a piece of paper, a paper towel, actually going over the black light to diffuse it a little bit. Now, just trust me, this looks a lot better for the human eye than it does on the camera. The camera does not do these plates justice. As you can see, you can't see them unless you're right up on them. 
But uh, let me see if I can use another black light. I have a couple portable black lights. The yellow one, by the way, the one that I described as the ugly yellow one, doesn't do anything at all, so we'll get rid of it. Amazing. If you can see, the, if you could actually see these though, with your actual eyes, as opposed to seeing them through a camera, then through a computer, then with your actual eyes, they would look a lot better. Really just don't think I'm quite doing them justice. Wow. Amazing. Anyway, so that's the beauty of the uranium. And as you well know, natural uranium has that same sort of effect too. Let me use a better one. See? Natural uranium. <laughs> but anyway, that was uranium searsite. So this has been Tom from anti-proton.com and uh bye bye